cheers are for Marlon Starling. A lot of people came down from Hartford, Connecticut, his hometown. He's the USBA champ. Donald Curry is the North American champion. And Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, you know all about this young man. What's your impression, and what do you think of today's fight? Well, again, we have contrast in style, like the uh, Mayweather and uh, Munoz fight. Here we have a boxer, Curry, who stand up. Very good uh, power. And uh, Stalins, who's pretty much an inside fighter. He throws a lot of combinations. Yo, Clancy, Marlon Starling is an explosive puncher and kind of awkward. Yes, Tim, he's a very hyper guy. He's an imaginative guy. Those punches from all angles, similar to Aaron Pryor. Takes chances, makes it exciting. Marlon Starling, the USBA champion from Hartford. Donald Curry is from Fort Worth, Texas. He is ranked number two in the world by both the WBA and the WBC. That does not sit well with Marlon Starling, who is ranked number six in the world by the WBC, number nine by the WBA. Of course, Milton McCrory, whom you saw two weeks ago on CBS, is currently ranked number one. All three of those boxers and others in the welterweight division awaiting November 9th when our Sugar Ray Leonard will tell the world, is he going to defend? Is he going to retire? And uh, these are the three top prospects in the division. Today you'll see Curry and Starling when we return to Convention Hall in just a moment. We are back live from Atlantic City, New Jersey at the Convention Hall and about in cooperation with Caesars Boardwalk Regency Hotel. Here is our ring announcer, Frank Shane. Take pleasure in presenting the Unification Welterweight Championship, the USBA and the North American Boxing Federation, and the officials assigned by the New Jersey State Athletic Commission and the USBA and the NABF. The doctors in attendance at ringside, Chief Physician Dr. Frank Burnett Doggett and Dr. Stanley P. Rogers. The timekeeper, Roy Johnson, counting for the knockdowns at the bell. Referee Frank Capsino. The judges, Spider Byron from Texas, Harold Letterman from New York, and Lou Bogas from Connecticut. The referee in the ring at this time, Rudy Battle. In the red corner, he's wearing blue trunks trimmed with gold. Undefeated in 24 bouts with 16 kilos. From Hartford, Connecticut, he weighed in at 146 and a half pounds. He is the United States Boxing Association lightweight champion. introductions for Donald Curry and Marlon Starling and clearly most of the house will be favoring Marlon Starling because he could get people here quite easily from Hartford Connecticut it's a long way from Fort Worth there is Marlon Starling scoring in this bout as we listen to the referee Rudy battle will be done by three judges at ringside one from Connecticut Lou Bogash one from Texas Marlon Bynum and one from New York Harold Letterman scoring on the 10-point must system Nine Please points fight. or fewer to the loser of a round. Please fight. Good luck to both of you. Shake hands. Rudy Battle, the non-scoring referee, will be in charge in the ring. And we are about set to go with unbeaten Donald Curry and unbeaten Marlon Starling. 21-year-old Curry is 14-0. 24-year-old Marlon Starling is 25-0. And, and there was some word that Curry had trouble making the weight for this bout. He showed up late for the weigh-in at 8 o'clock this morning and weighed in right at the limit of 147. You know, Tim, that could be a, have a psychological effect on uh, Donald Curry. Uh, just the point of having to struggle to make that weight. Well, if indeed that's what he did. We had no confirmation that that happened, except that he did not appear at 8 o'clock for the official weigh-in, did not weigh in until more than an hour later, right at 147. A warning by referee battle to both boxers to watch their heads inside. 
Well, there is no throw out process. Both men are just going at it the very first round. We saw Marlon Starling flatten Kevin Morgan at 206 of the first round to win the USBA crown. Here on CBS, he's had one fight since then, a 10-round decision over Mal De La Rosa. Tim, when fighters go all out like this in the first round, they're usually a little tight, and if a guy gets nailed when he's tight, anything can happen. This, this is an important round to watch in this fight. No feeling out at all. Both going bombs. Donald Curry won the NABF title with a fourth-round knockout of Bruce Finch, who fought Ray Leonard for the World Championship. In his last outing, Curry went 10 rounds to beat the difficult Adolfo Burriouette in July here on CBS. Inside, Tim, you will see that Marlon Stollers is far more effective than the uh, taller Donald Curry. But on the outside, Curry has that good left jab and that good overhand right. He would be more effective. I think it's safe to say we had a disappointing lightweight championship bout, an impressive performance by Roger Mayweather winning the title, a disappointing show by the champion Ruben Munoz. I can't believe we'll have a disappointing fight here. These two fellows have already set a very aggressive pace. Both of these young men are very impressive fighters, and um, like Gil said, they're tight. So anything can happen at this point. Right hand lead by Curry just grazed the chin of Starling. Starling digging back to the body under a minute to go round one. Stalin's doing the wrong thing. He's starting to reach now for Curry, and uh, Curry could capitalize on that. <laughs> well, there's a little show by the Magic Man. The move I never saw before to do right. <laughs> I've never seen that. I don't want to try it either. <laughs> right, right. He is flamboyant, no question about that. You will hear his supporters call Moochie, Moochie, Moochie. It's a nickname for him. And there are more than 800 of them down here from Hartford, Connecticut. <laughs> Final seconds of round number one, scheduled for 12. <laughs> round number two, on the left of your screen is the NABF champion. Now on the right, Donald Curry is circling to the left. And now around to the right is Marlon Starling, the USDA welterweight champion, digging shots to the body and Donald Curry pushing him off. Out comes a mouthpiece as Curry cut Starling with his mouth open. And Starling's mouthpiece is out. It wasn't a very hard punch, but it was a surprise punch. He just seemed to reach out with it. But when Starling comes in, he throws a lot of punches, but they're not really that effective because he's throwing punches, just whipping them in there. He's not putting his body behind him. Well, Curry is reputed to be the bomber of the two. If anybody lands one big punch that can change the fight amount, it should be Curry. I, what I like about uh, Donald Curry Gill is the fact that he's, he's very patient and uh, he's a real professional. He makes everything count. Marlon Starling has certainly been colorful in the early going here with a couple of footwork maneuvers we haven't seen from anybody else. When you've got your mouthpiece out this early in a round, Ray Leonard, do you consciously try to protect it? Protect well, your mouth? Well, my teeth are costly. I always try to protect my mouth. <laughs> No, but what would Starling be thinking about? We know it's a little more peekaboo in this round. Well, at this point now, by having his mouthpiece knocked out, it's a form of embarrassment. It's like an insult to a fighter. And uh, But the main thing for him to do is to do what he's doing now, continue to work. He has to protect that mouth because one solid punch in the mouth could rip his teeth, could rip his lip right, wide open, and he could lose on a TKO. He's got to get through this round get that mouthpiece back. But he's staying inside and punching the Curry. You know, it's a good thing that Curry doing. He goes down. He stoops down with uh, Stalin. So he won't have a shot to his body. Well, you're always taught to keep your head lower than the other guy's head inside, no matter what, man. That's one of the things that most good trainers teach. To prevent uh, head butts also. Under a minute to go. Round number two, scheduled for 12. Welterweight championship of North America and the United States combined. These two champions meeting. Ranked number two and six in the world. Sure, Milt McCrory is looking into some interest today from Detroit. Ranked number one. And all three and others in the division awaiting November 9th in Ray Leonard's decision. Now, I can see why they call Curry the Cobra. He is quick. He 
not as flashy as Stalling, but when he makes a move, it's quick. 1979 National AAU champion and the 80 National Golden Gloves champ on the Olympic trials in 1980. Had over 400 amateur fights since the age of eight. Starling won the National AAUs in 1974 and the Junior Olympics that year. Final seconds, round two. Round number three from Convention Hall, live on CBS Sports Saturday. Donald Curry in yellow trunks, Marlon Starling in blue, and Gil Clancy, uh, what about Starling standing between rounds? His trainer and manager, Mac Buckley, has him stand up between rounds. Well, I, don't, I don't like that a bit, Sam. If, it, if it's a 12-round 12, 12 fight and it goes to 12, that means the other guy is sitting down and resting for 11 more minutes than you are. Uh, a wrestling oh, match this. ensuing look here. This. As soon as they got clinched, Starling literally muscled Curry around, but it, this is not two out of three falls, unfortunately, for Starling. Well, we, we said he's flamboyant, Tim. He, he's like, he's in there to win this fight. He, he's not looking for any help from the referee or anybody else, and I guess he thinks Katie barred the door. Anything goes. Anyhow, Tim, I also like to have a guy sitting down because I think I can get his attention better and work on him, administer right, right. Vaseline, and look him right in the eye when I'm giving, giving him the instructions. I think that's important. Raymond, have you always uh, sat on a stool between rounds? Well, Tim, I always sit down because I try to get as much rest as I possibly can. Donald Curry, bright yellow trunks, the Cobra from Fort Worth. Marlon Starling from Hartford, Connecticut in blue. Starling has a very unorthodox style. You never know what punch he's going to throw because uh, he's here, he's there. Again, he's like uh, Aaron Pryor. The best combination for Donald Curry to throw is that left uppercut and that overhand right. And what's going to lead up to that is that left jab. Starling comes in, uh, what I say, he, he makes earmuffs. He takes one, one glove and puts it on each side of his head. I don't particularly like that because that leaves your body open. Curry could be ripping some good left hooks underneath when he raises those hands up like, the way he does. Curry's going to continue to mess with that overhand right because what's happening now, Starling's going to start to time it. You know, it's every time that uh, Curry throws a jab, Starling goes down because he knows the right hand is going to follow that. Starling just let out a couple of bird calls, Tim. I mean, <laughs> who do you think he was trying to call? <laughs> I guess a fellow Starling. I'm not sure. <laughs> Very good, Tim. <laughs> Maybe he brought some <laughs> with him along with the fans. Very good. 24-year-old Marlon Starling has had 11 more professional fights than Donald Curry. But not nearly as many amateur fights. He started a little later. Step out. Step back, step back, 107 amateur bouts for Starling. Under 30 seconds to go in the third round. Starling going to the body effectively in the last exchange. Curry, the more patient of the two. Final seconds of the third round. All right, please step out. Round number four scheduled for 12. The North American champion, Donald Curry in yellow. Marlon Starling, the USBA champion in blue. Referee Rudy Battle having some difficulty getting them separated. Close fight as we see it so far. Neither fighter able to assert any real dominance. And it is the matchup that we expected. Two outstanding young welterweights. And they're interested in what's going to happen on November 9th, uh, Ray Leonard. Uh, what's this about a about a party that sounds like you're celebrating something well i'm looking forward to it at the baltimore civic center for two main reasons no more speculations i'll make the decision and also the money that's raised will go towards a, a, a summer a job program well that's a great idea and of course everybody wants to know what you're going to announce that night we're looking forward to that evening Tim, if I, if I was Curry, I'd stay with that left jab. He's a little taller than Stalling. He has a little longer reach. I don't think he has to be impatient. The way Stalling makes those earmuffs, you can just pop that jab right at his forehead time after time. But I like the way that uh, Curry goes to the body, especially inside. He, he comes around with that, uh, that body shot to the ribs. You know, he threw, just threw it again. So I sense that uh, Marlon Starling is starting to talk to Curry. In fact, he was warned uh, earlier 
about talking. Don't hold it in there. Stop holding it. Hold it. Well, if there's any truth to the fact that Donald Curry had a lot of trouble making the weight, it could, po could possibly affect his stamina if the fight was into like the 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th round. Starling scored inside with that last exchange after Curry had landed a couple of good shots. <laughs> there's that. I'm not sure what he calls that. He must have a name for it. The Magic Man Stomp or something. Again, Curry, I see now that uh, he's in a position to throw a left a shot to the kid. They lose. You know, uh, Stalin's is straight up. And there's no protection to his kidneys. Good combination scored by Curry just before the break. Starling looking back to his corner. Thinking, feeling the referee was breaking him prematurely. What should I do? Under 30 seconds, fourth round. Like to alert our local stations along the line. We'll be going to a station break at the end of this fourth round. Starling and Curry, welterweights, will be back after this word from your local station. This is CBS. Sunday is Archie supporting the arts. I never liked them. They always will. Then Gloria brings home the bacon. Baby, baby. Sunday. We are back live from Convention Hall on CBS Sports Saturday. Tim Ryan with Sugar Ray Leonard and Gil Clancy. This is the NABF and USBA Welterweight Championship going 12 rounds. If they get that far, round five. Starling, the U.S. champ in blue. The North American champ, Donald Curry, in yellow. Donald Curry ranked number two in the world behind Milton McCrory by both the WBA and WBC. Starling is ranked number six by the WBC. Number nine by the WBA. Ring Magazine likes him number five. Donald Curry doesn't need to be inside. He can stay on the outside and just um, just outbox Starlings. But inside, he takes a chance of not only getting the butt, but getting caught by some of those uppercuts. Watch Curry inside. He takes that right foot and steps forward, and, and in effect, becomes a southpaw. Right? He's done it three or four times so far. Very, very cute inside, Curry. Again, a reminder to our local stations, we'll be going once more to a station break at the end of this fifth round. Hard shot to the body by Curry. There's that uh, stomp by the Starling stomp, I think we're going to call that. I'm, I'm not sure what effect it has. Kind of looks like a pony pawing the ground before he's about to get at the hay. If I was in there with Starlings, I would catch him in the air. Right in the middle of the stomp? Yeah, well, he just got caught then. Oh, then reduce the timing. Right. Jump right on him. I don't like that business of making him up. She got that left hand, you're supposed to do something with it. He's inviting Curry to punch him. Curry's punching. Again, Curry should be going to that body. Every time that Stalin put those, uh, what, what do you call them? Yeah, I call them earmuffs, man. Looks like he's making earmuffs. Go to the body. The reason a fighter does that is he's trying to invite the other guy to punch. He's too lazy to open him up with a jab. I think that's a very bad habit to get in. I used to really give my fighters heck when I do something like that. A little stronger than heck, too. Starling holds victories over Floyd Mayweather, the older brother of Roger, who won the U.S. lightweight title earlier today on CBS Sports Saturday. Also wins over Juan Hidalgo and Babs McCarthy. I think a punch, a right hand by Starling's got through. Curry holding on firmly here. That brings in referee Rudy Battle. Curry's best wins over Curtis Ramsey, Bruce Finch, and Adolfo Virio at some blood from Curry has, Curry has a cut under his lip that looks like a pretty bad cut from that right hand that Stalling nailed him with. It's a good cut, and it's bothering Curry. Final seconds of the fifth round. We'll be back after this word from your local station. This is CBS.
every year, Ryder buys thousands of new rental trucks to help you save money. And right now, you can save even more money because Ryder is offering great one-way rates to New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Texas, California, practically anywhere. For local rentals, any Ryder truck up to 18 feet is only $24.95 a day plus mileage. Rent a Ryder truck. Save a buck. The Thing, Monday at 4 on Movie 7. Tomorrow on CBS Sports, legendary Jim Brown and Dick Butkus. Did the rewards match the sacrifices? And what about the pros today? The NFL Today on CBS Sports. There's Marlon Starling, who has opened a cut on the lip of Donald Curry in round number five. And we're underway with round six. Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard. Two welterweight champions trying to combine the titles and more importantly looking ahead to a world title shot. Yes, there, there's the uppercut again by Stalins. And it will continue to do damage to the, uh, the, the lip that don't that, occur. That lip is bothering Curry. He's sticking his tongue out. He's licking his lip. That also could prove dangerous. He better not get hit with that tongue sticking out. It is bothering him, though. Solid right to the ear of Curry from Starling. Well, Curry's making a mistake of getting inside. Uh, with Stalin, which he ha he doesn't have to. He can box. That's right. He has that good long left jab and has plenty of power. That's all he has to do is step in and out. I don't know why he likes to be inside there with Stalin. Stalin's the shorter guy and has the advantage inside. And he's a very flamboyant and confident kid. Keep him outside and tame him. That's the thing to do. Stalin said before the fight he didn't think Curry was anything special. And he thought that he should be ranked number one, meaning that he thinks he's better than Milk McCrory, too. All of that will be settled once Ray Leonard settles matters on November 9th. That'll be some interesting matchups. A wink from Starling over at our champion Sugar Ray Leonard. He's a piece of work, Marlon Starling. He's very confident now. The magic man, Mucci. Donald Curry, the more classic boxer puncher of the two. His nickname, the Cobra. And we've seen some of that quick disguised speed from Curry. This footwork by Starling is just absolutely you know, fascinating to me. I really believe that uh, Starling is just trying to uh, upset him, frustrate him. That's right, Ray. That's all part of his act. He's very cocky. I thought that was cut. There you go. Well, you found another one, right? Well, he, he surpasses me by a long shot. Under a minute to go. You see what Stalin did then? That, that, that was from Willie Pep and Sandy Saddle. He put his, he put his leg behind Curry and he was going to throw him down. I don't believe that. He doesn't need to do this. He has so much talent. Both fighters. But what he's doing, though, he's, he's taking Curry's concentration away from Curry. should just be like a shoemaker and stick to his last and just keep throwing those punches. But he's watching Stalin. Under 30 seconds to go on the sixth round. Starling tried to spin Curry and hit him on the spin, but he missed. Again, Curry should not be that close to, uh, to my, uh, Marla Stalin's because of that, uh, well, that injury to his mouth. Stalin made him grab then. Tomorrow on CBS Sports Sunday, former lightweight champion Homer Kenny meets Roberto Elizondo. The U.S. Men's Gymnastics Championships and the pool shootout tomorrow on CBS Sports. We're looking into the corner of Donald Curry has a cut on his lower lip. It does not appear to be too bad, but as Gil Clancy has pointed out, it's bothersome. It's the kind of thing the fighter's conscious of. If he was a half an inch lower, a quarter of an inch lower, he probably wouldn't even notice it. Will it become a factor? Well, it will, of course, uh, remain to be seen. We are live from Convention Hall in Atlantic City. Seventh round, scheduled for 12. Marlon Starling has been the showman here through six. The USBA champion, Donald Curry in yellow, the North American champion from Fort Worth. Again, you see Curry kind of licking his lip, conscious of that cut. Starling trying to 
put a long-range combination together fell short. Beautiful boxing ability by Chloe. Uh, Tim. He has a lot of talent. A lot of talent. He can move, move in either direction, punch. A lot of talent. And Stalling again, he's the flamboyant guy. He's trying to hustle to win this decision. Neither fighter has intimidated the other. Curry may be a little bit distracted by the unusual style of Starling, but <laughs> who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be? I break, 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 break. Yeah, I have a Neither fighter has been in with a fighter of this class. They're looking at their best opponents yet in each case. Tim, there aren't too many fighters in the world of this class. When they get together, this is about it. Milton McCrory uh, above them in the rankings. Those are the three that fight fans think uh, will produce the next colorweight champion one way or another. Under a minute to go, round seven. I notice now they're starting start to uh, catch uh, Curry's left jab. So Curry needs to fake it. Fake that left jab and come with the lead off right. Get the feeling that Starling would like to stand and go toe to toe with Curry. Curry uh, wisely has avoided that kind of a confrontation, at least to this point in the fight. Under 30 seconds to go round seven. I can't believe Curry's reaction to that cut, Tim. He's constantly fooling around with it with his tongue. It, it really is on his mind. There it is again. Doesn't appear to be the case, but it may extend inside the left. End of round seven. Next weekend, the lightning hands and disarming smile of Hector Camacho against undefeated Melvin Paul. Plus, the Wizards of the Trick Shots next weekend on CBS Sports Saturday. In the corner of Donald Curry, his manager David Gorman and his trainer Paul Rays, along with Joe Barrientes, attending to that neck on the lip and giving him some encouragement. A very calm corner, and that reflects the personality of the fighter Curry. Well, Tim, I never heard a guy more calm than Dave uh, Gorman. He says, look, he says, keep him on the outside. Keep him in the center of the ring. He says, we're falling a little behind in the fight. I mean, I, I would never be that calm when I'm talking to a fighter. I say, hey, come on, let's go, you know. Curry needs to keep his hands up. When he comes inside and he backs away, his hands are down, which is a big mistake because Stalin throws punches as the fighters move it back. And Stalin landed a good left hook Ray, just under those conditions. Stalin trying to keep Curry pinned into the corner. Curry moving well to avoid the worst of that artillery, or the best, depending on your point of view. I would never exchange punches with a fighter like Stalin because he's throwing punches and... Uh, he turns into a wild man. I would prefer to tie him up and back away from him. Sugar Ray Leonard, Gil Clancy, Tim Ryan live on CBS Sports Saturday. More boxing tomorrow on a non-football Sunday. We'll have former champion Hilmer Kenty against Roberto Elizondo, two of the top ten lightweights in the world. And also you'll see Mauricio Bravo and Pablo Baez, another pair of welterweights interested in today's proceedings. It's tomorrow, following a special edition of the NFL Today at 12.30 Eastern Time, we'll have boxing following the NFL Today. I don't think Starling is as busy as he could can be inside either, Tim. His hands are free and he just doesn't move them enough. He throws one at a time. Curry's talking about some good body shots. They could be taking their toll on uh, Bob Starling's. This is See, Starling's inside, his hands are free, but he just doesn't seem to punch him. Look at now, both hands are free, standing right in front of him, doesn't let him go. That's the time to score points. I think he may have heard you. Looked over here, he's easily distracted. Another uh, wink for... Better, st okay. better stop winking and start fighting. Under a minute to go in this eighth round. The Starling stomp again. Starling stomp. Yeah, I had to give it a label. We're going to apparently see more of it. I haven't
haven't seen him throw a punch off it. That was maybe next. Swing. That was a great combination just, just thrown by Marlon Stalin. Heavy punches, Ray. They were very heavy punches. He seems to be getting a little, a lot of respect out of Curry at this particular time. Oh, that's a good geez. point. You know, I think that's the first time we've really seen it on the part of either fighter. Right. Watch the elbows of Marlon Stalin because he uses them well. Yes, he does, Ray. Well, he comes from hockey country up in Hartford, you know. <laughs> they know about elbows. He doesn't need to. He's a good fighter. Final seconds of the eighth round. Curry finishing well with a flurry here in round eight. <laughs> Mr. McEnroe, that's a very close shave. You must be joking. That ball was in. No, Mr. McEnroe, you're shaved. It's very close. Of course. I shave with Vic. You earn millions and shave with a 20-cent Vic? Look, why pay more for fancy handles and tricky tots when I get lots of close shaves with Vic? Advantage, back and roll. He's right. I don't have to shave with a 20-cent Vic. But I do. Round number nine, Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard live from Convention Hall. We have an interesting competitive bout between two champions, the U.S. champion Blue Marlin Starling, Donald Curry, the NABF champion Yellow. Close fight as we see it. Scheduled for 12. Scoring by three judges on the 10-point plus system. The referee Rudy Battle stepping in will not figure in the scoring. See how you think the left jab is. You should do this all day. Curry needs to be throwing left jab more and more. And we come off the box that he really is. You know, Stalin just used those bird calls again. To put it, but I don't understand. He's, he's got to do a little more fighting. It's a very, very close fight. He's acting like he won the entire eight rounds. two punches and he stops. He has to make these flashy flurries. Donald Curry came in at 147 on the nose. There was some speculation that he had trouble making the weight. He weighed in after the official weigh-in time. Starling at 146 and a half. Two good left hands by Curry. Starling dropping his hands saying no they weren't. Yeah, he, may, he may drop his hands and say, no, they weren't, but they're scoring points. Exactly. That's what this is all about. Left hand scored by Starling. <laughs> College football fans, we're going to give you a scoring update at the end of this round, so stay with us, those of you interested in catching up with today's scores. Under a minute to go. Round number nine. Oh, good right hand by Starling. Right hand by Starling landed as Curry missed his overhand right. And Curry, Curry is acting as if he's been hurt. He's respecting Starling now for the second time in the fight. Yeah, he seems to be in a little trouble. He's doing the right thing. He's moving away and trying to clear his head. Now's the time when Stalin has to throw those combinations, body and head, but he's chasing the guy without punching. Under 30 seconds to go, an uppercut landed by Starling, and good shot back from the right hand of Curry. Stalin gets beautiful position inside, but then a lot of times doesn't move his hands. Too easily distracted. He doesn't concentrate enough in those circumstances. Now let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for an NCAA update. The game of the day in college football, Coach, we've got to show them the Illinois-Wisconsin highlights. It was a whale of a ball game. Here we see Randy Wright throwing the ball to Al Toon. He makes a great catch. Goes down the sideline for about 53 yards and puts Wisconsin ahead 20-9. to nine. Now, Illinois regained the lead, and that set up an unbelievable play by Wisconsin. But when that thing bounced on the ground, I didn't have it. I, I felt terrible, and I couldn't understand why. But obviously, I, I felt it, and it was a great play, well executed and well timed. Watch this ball hit the Astro Tour. Randy Wright throws the ball. Everybody thinks it's an incompleted pass. Toon grabs it, throws it downfield for a 40-yard pass for a Jeff Nault touchdown. 
Time for one more hero. This Mike was 46, Bass. and I knew that was well within my range, and I would just go out there and kick the ball. He makes it sound so easy. Wisconsin called the timeout. They did everything to throw off his rhythm, but he kicked it 29-28. Let's go back now to Tim Ryan in Atlantic City. Tim? We are back live from Convention Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Marlon Starling in blue, Donald Curry in yellow. A close fight as we see it. Starling perhaps getting the better of the last couple of rounds, and he did appear to hurt Curry, at least momentarily, with one clean shot in round nine. This is the tenth round. Tim Ryan, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Gil Clancy. Again, the referee warned uh, Starling from that elbow use. Elbow and open glove, lacing with an open glove, Ray. You know, it disturbs me when a fighter has so much talent and you know, uses those illegal tactics. Well, and plus, so we mentioned his lack of concentration, Ray. He's, he's easily distracted. He's not really staying down to business every second of every round. But, Tim, I'll tell you, he's acting like a winner now. He really has Donald Curry on the run. Donald's really running around that ring, trying to score points that way. And Starling, if he's not doing anything, at least looks like the aggressor. If these guys want me to leave the ring, they got to be a lot uh, better sportsmen. Good point, Ray. And I think that Curry is starting to show signs of getting a little weary. Starling digging to the body, and Curry is definitely now using much more motion and far less punching. This is round number 10, scheduled for 12. It will combine the NABF and U.S. titles at 147 pounds. Curry coming in and out. Well, this is going to be a tough uh, fight to score, Tim. Now, for example, a round like this, some judges like guys that move all around the ring and look to score a point here and there, and other judges like the guys that do the pressing and put them together when they get inside. So who do you like? Under a minute remaining in the 10th round, we're going to have another college football update for you quite a day on CBS Sports. What a thriller that Illinois finish was. Brent Musburger and Ara Parsegian will have more on today's college football action. At this point now, especially in the late rounds, both fighters would be more effective if you just both just settle down. Curry landed an overhand right to the arm of Starling that caught him off balance. He was not hurt by that blow, but in his inimitable style, he just kind of casually fell back. I think Curry is stealing this round, Tim. He's doing all the moving. Starling is making a lot of motions, but he's not landing any punches at all. <laughs> Coming to the end of this 10th round. Close fight as we see it. Curry and Starling. Right hand landed by Starling. Let's go to Brent now in New York. Uh, like the Illinois, Wisconsin, coach, let's show them Penn State and West Virginia. <laughs> Hang high the Nittany Lion. <laughs> well, you know what? The, the first touchdown here by Penn State. Watch this. You don't see this very often at the four-yard line. Black ledge to Warner to Williams on a reverse play, and he goes in for the touchdown. Now, Hostetler of West Virginia will throw a pass. Great throw and a great catch right here. Daryl Miller will catch the ball and will run with the football, but will fumble at the 25-yard line, and Wayne Brown of West Virginia will recover. Coach, what an opportunity. Trailing by 10. Here went West Virginia for the touchdown. But there was Radosik picking it off for Penn State. And Walker Lee Ashley right here, number 37, does a screen there, comes back, and picks off another man as he goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Really was a big turning point in the game. Two former teammates congratulate each other. Todd Blackledge and Jeff Hosteller back to Tim Ryan. We're back for round number 11, and Gil Clancy, we could hear Mac Buckley admonishing Marlon Starling. Well, he said exactly what we were talking about, Tim. Uh, Starling has got to start to throw five or six punches at a time. He has to stop showboating and start working. That's what it's all about, scoring points. He gets inside, he gets perfect position, and then he doesn't let his hands go, or he throws one and stops. Well, that's when the stars can really take advantage of it. He just uh, has very fast hands, and uh, 
Smith. Score a lot of points. Another thing he's doing wrong now, he's following Curry around the ring. He's just walking after him. He just walk, and from that position, it's tough to get off. He's just following Curry, and he's being picked apart, or at least he was last night. Those of you expecting other programming on CBS at 6 o'clock, uh, we will be joining that, of course. The reason we're running over our normal sports time this afternoon, college football games ran a little long today, so we got started late here in Atlantic City. But you are watching round 11 of a scheduled 12-round welterweight championship. The North American champion is Donald Curry in yellow and the U.S. champion, Marlon Starling in blue. With the way uh, Curry is moving around the ring, in a situation like this, what I would do, throw a lead off right, because again, Starlin's is starting to follow uh, Donald Curry around the ring. He's chasing it. He's right. not trying to cut the ring off. He can throw that right hand, Ray, right to the side, right to the elbow, bring Curry in front of him, and then get him into an exchange. That's, That's what it. he has to do to trap him. And he would definitely be in good position to do whatever he wants to do. Come on, put it Donald Curry, as we saw, took an early lead, but a lot of close rounds. Starling, we gave seven, eight, and nine to on our unofficial card. But uh, it's going to be a difficult fight to decide. One round to go after this one. Two hard punchers who have been unable to hurt each other, mainly because of this kind of activity. Tim, you see the way that Stone reaches. He reaches for Curry. Curry has an opportunity, and every opportunity in the book, to throw something back, especially on the right hand. He has to get some points from the judges for aggressiveness, though. Uh, Donald Curry's really moving around that ring now. Again, he's uh, Curry's in very good position to throw the overhand right. Starling just missed with his overhand right. Starling is literally chasing Curry, but as you fellas point out, not effectively cutting the ring off. Under 30 seconds to go, round number 11. Here's an example. Here's an example where Starling's inside again, has both hands free. He has to move, he has to put on a show. That's what the judges are looking for. Separate one guy from the other. Very difficult when you don't punch. Look at the position he has now to move those hands. Coming to the end of this 11th round, the judges are Lou Bogash from Connecticut, Arlen Bynum from Texas, Harold Letterman from New York. They'll do the scoring. That ends round number 11. Let's go to Marlon Starling's corner where you see his manager and trainer, Mac Buckley, a veteran of the amateur boxing wars and an attorney at Hartford. All the marks right here. You go out, he's tired, and you're catching, you're catching him with everything moving in there, but you've got to throw punches. Okay, last round, we can soft and warm up. Punch moving in, punch moving in. In the Donald Curry quarter. You know what I'm telling you? I want you to nail it some hard shots at last round. You hear me? This is it. This is it, Donald. Come on, let's put it together. Can you do it on your back? Dave Gorman. The trainer Paul Ray is telling Curry to put some more punches together. So both corners want their fighters to finish well. This is by our viewpoint a very close fight between two of the top three welterweights in the world rankings. And this is the final round. 11 knockouts in 14 fights for Curry. 16 and 25 for Starling, but they're on their feet against each other in the final round, the 12th. This fight could very well go into a draw because I have the way I have the six five Starling's lead. Slight edge. Very close fight, Ray, and, and Starling is working now the way he could have worked in all, a lot of those earlier rounds when he gets that good position inside. But Curry's banging right back with him now. And it was Starling that looked to tie him up and grab instead of punching with him that time. They punch and they sit there. At this point now, they should be throwing all the punches they can. This one, this one shows uh, championship maturity. That's right. This is where they separate the men from the boys. This is the round. Both fighters just trying to land one big punch. 
and what they could be doing, especially inside here, throwing, uh, th making points by like throwing combinations. Curry with a good curry there. He's been a little busier. By far, Stalin gets the position and Curry lands the punches. Stalin digs an uppercut inside. But Curry again with another flurry. Stalin seems to be a little dazed. Overhand right by Donald Curry landed. Clean. Under a minute to go. A close fight that could well be decided in this final minute. They're both showing signs of fatigue. Curry and Starling. Curry lands a combination. get away from him. He's not punching as much, and Curry's taking control now. Well, this fight has had an ebb and flow, regardless of the outcome. I would expect you will see both these fighters still figuring prominently in the waterweight division. Quite a match up here today, and it'll be a very difficult fight to call. Final seconds of the 12th round. Give me my gloves, Tim. Who do you at home think won this one? Good fight. That's it. Starling gets the hands up quickly, gets his supporters on their feet, but the judges, of course, will be rendering the decision. So we'll be back with the decision here in Atlantic City. Right now, let's join Brent Musburger for a sports news update from our studios in New York. This CBS Sports News Update is sponsored by Prudential Insurance. Coach, this has become an unbelievable afternoon in college football. Look at the possible upsets right now. Texas Tech and Washington, they are scoreless. Nine minutes left in the third period. Meanwhile, Missouri leads Nebraska 10-9. They have just started the fourth quarter in that game. And Notre Dame has just fallen behind Oregon 13-10. And I understand about 10 minutes to go. And tomorrow we have another full lineup for you on CBS Sports Sunday. We're going to start with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern Time. We're going to have live reports from the Strike Talks in Baltimore, the Players Association meeting in Washington, and a pair of former superstars, Dick Butkus and Jimmy Brown, will tell us how they feel about what's been going on. And then more great boxing action right here on CBS Sports Sunday. Tomorrow on CBS Sports Sunday, former WBA lightweight champion Hilmer Kennedy continues his comeback after surgery on a torn retina. I think Roberto Elizondo will move me closer to the championship, and that is one reason that I'm fighting him. Roberto Elizondo has proved, proven himself as a good lightweight and one of the top lightweight contenders. And Kenny's opponent, Roberto Elizondo, who once lost the title bout to Alexis Arguello, hopes he can earn a second shot if he wins tomorrow. This fight is very important to me, too, because it's like another title shot, another title opportunity, because if I do win this, I'll get a chance at the title. Also on tomorrow's card, Pablo Baez and unbeaten Mauricio Bravo, another pair of welterweights, waiting their turns if Sugar Ray vacates his crown. Now for more on the show, here's John Tesh. He is Jim Hartung. He and the rest of America's finest gymnasts in search of the sport's highest compliment. The perfect 10. Bronze, silver, and gold on the line in this one. National titles in each event. It's the men's individual gymnastics championships. And you'll see it right here tomorrow on Sports Sunday. Right now, let's go to John Madden. Last week, many of you saw two legends in the game of pool. Willie Moscone and Minnesota Fats stretched two legends to be, Steve Mizrak and Alan Hopkins, to the limit before losing four games to three. Tomorrow, the young and the old pair up when Mizrak and Moscone take on Hopkins and Minnesota Fats as a great pool shootout of 1982 continues. So it's boxing, gymnastics, and pool all coming up tomorrow on CBS Sports Sunday. Okay, let's go. We are back here in Atlantic City, and with the decision, here's ring announcer Frank Shane. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the voting of the decision. Judge Lou Bogash votes 
113 points, Curry. Yeah. 117 points, Starr. We have a split decision. Holland Spider Bynum votes 116 for Curry, 112 for Starr. for Curry, 112 for Starling, the winner and There it is, a split champion. decision. Donald Curry getting the votes of the judge from Texas and the one from New York. Starling getting the votes of the judge from his state of Connecticut. And it is a split decision in favor of Donald Curry, who now holds both the North American and the U.S. titles. He is currently ranked two in the world. And Starling, of course, will still figure very, very heavily in the world title picture, along with number one rank, Milton McCrory. And we will all find out November 9th what our Sugar Ray Leonard is going to do about those two titles he holds, WBC and WBA.